Hi everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. I hope you're having a great weekend. Happy Sunday. Uh, so lots of fun things going on here at Hedgehog Hollow. Our subscription boxes have started to be mailed out. And uh, today I want you to sit and talk about stamp and die storage and organization. Now I know it's something that lots of you have asked me about and I said I would do a live on it because I think it's something that's more interactive it's something that I have struggled with and finally I have found something that I like. It might work for you, it might not work for you, but I'm gonna to talk to you about some different methods I've been through, the things I use to organize, and then um, the reasons that I change between different things. Now, of course, I have a rather large stamp and die collection. You may have a smaller collection, different things might work for you, but I'm gonna talk you through kind of how I started and how it's grown and where I am now. So, first of all, some hellos. Uh, so I see lots of you have joined with us. Mary is here, Donna, Penny, Rebecca, Irene, Jane is here, uh, Arlene is here, lots of our members joining us this morning and people joining us from all over the place too. So Kim is here, Wendy's here. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We also put our new member codes up last night. If you haven't heard about our member program, it is so worth joining up. The brands this month have all increased their coupon code, so lucky members as well. Uh, lots of people getting their red badges as well, going up from green to red. Um, oh, Kim's got her red badge. Yay, Kim! Uh, I still can't wait for everyone to get their one year badge. It's definitely my favorite one. Um, but if you are a Hedgehog Hollow member, in addition to your birthday card, your cool badge, the access to the Hedgehog Hollow emojis um, and some other fun things in there, you also get 10% off at the Hedgehog Hollow store, 10% off at Elizabeth Craft, or $5 or five euros off a purchase, depending on where you're based. 10% off at Ellen Hudson all month long, that doesn't expire like our other coupon. 10% off at Tonic Studios, plus they do flash 20% off sales and other exclusive for our members. Um, you get the 15% off the embellishments and mediums, you can pick between the two. You get free shipping at Sunny Studios or a shipping credit if you're international. You get 15% off now at Ranger, which is awesome because we can buy our alcohol pearls and all those things at 15% off. Thermaweb are giving you 20% off and then you can also stack that free shipping code on top of that for $50 purchases. Pink and Main are giving you free shipping over $20. Arteza give you 10% and then we're adding more and more as we chat to more companies. So well worth joining. If you haven't joined the program yet, um, I do encourage you to check it out and join. So some of the companies that I will be talking about today for my storage are part of our member program. Um, and Ellen Hudson pretty much sells all of the items and I've dropped a link in the super chat that you're chatting with Greg on as well. So let's talk about stamp and die storage. So. I started off with a small cabinet of stamp and dies. In fact, we found it the other day. It's a really pretty red cabinet. You might remember seeing it in the background of some of my videos when we were based down in the basement. And all of my stamp and dies used to fit in that cabinet, which I'm sure Greg thinks, I wish they used to still fit in there. Wouldn't that be nice? They were a lot cheaper when they did. When they? Yes, that would be nice. They don't anymore. However, I still use the same envelope system, the same labeling system, the same everything else. So that system, no matter what size of collection you have, is going to work, or it works for me anyway. And as I say, some things are personal. You might find that you prefer one system over the other. Um, I can see lots of you chatting as well. So I'm gonna leave you to chat with Greg on that and he'll let me know if you have any questions too. Um, so storage envelope wise, there are oh, a few Bridget different options. waving from Germany. Oh, hi. I would think it's Brigitte or Brigitte. Well, you're German. Oh, it might even be a Birgit, like my aunt, I don't know. Um, but there are a few different uh, envelope options that you have available to you. So I have, and I'm gonna show you the unit and the way I store all those envelopes afterwards as well. Um, somebody said the link isn't working, so I'm just going to drop in oh, another no, link. Um, if you're on an iPad, sometimes the link is... Oh, yeah. No, it doesn't work. It says it not. Okay, I'm just gonna drop in another link before I get into the envelopes. So I'm gonna pop that in again. So um, the link is also in the video description and there should be a join button next to where it says Hedgehog Hollow subscribe, all that stuff. There should be a join button there too. Um, so I'm just gonna check on the questions before I get into the envelopes so that I can just keep the envelopes all together. Um, if you're not in the US, there are international shipping credits 
Uh, tonic in their UK store slash worldwide store give you all the same discounts. So if you're not in the US, you get those. And um, if you, all the companies we work with do ship globally. So we do try to make sure that everyone will ship worldwide to you as well. And um, you also still get all of the emojis, the birthday cards where you send your birthday card, wherever in the world your base will send it to you. Um, you still get all the access, you still get your Hedgehog Hollow discounts. We're also working with a couple of other UK slash EU and Australian based companies to get those codes set up for you as well. So they are the benefits. And Greg can also fill you in on all of those as well in the chat. So Who am I supposed to fill in on? What? If, I wasn't paying attention. If anyone has any questions on member benefits. Um, yes, Jane Robinson. I'm thinking of joining. What are the benefits I just of did, I just explained US? that. Oh, did you? Yes. I wasn't listening. <laughs> Isn't he good? He listens to everything I say. Well. <laughs> Love you. Love you too. <laughs> and Jesse Beck just wanted to come to summer. Um, I'm already going to search out if I want to be a member. Yeah, so uh, lots of reasons to be a member. I just went through all the coupon codes. I also dropped all the coupon codes in the video description for you. You also get a birthday card from the Prickle. You get advanced warnings of sales, you get exclusive sales, you get um, early access to our content. So a lot of times we do content and then things sell out really quickly because we get, um, we have over 35,000, nearly 36,000 uh, subscribers. So you also get early access to the content. So you get that a week ahead of everybody else. Um, oh, welcome Pandemonium. That is such a cool That's YouTube name. name. That's an awesome <laughs> YouTube name. That's awesome. So you get early access to our content. Um, and welcome Lisa's Crafty Creations, Lisa Michelli, Michelli, eek. Uh, welcome Lisa. That's much easier. I can do that one. Uh, so welcome, welcome. Um, so uh, welcome for that. <laughs> yeah, so there's lots of reasons. And I do always put them in the video description for you as well. So, uh, right, back to the envelopes. So I have a variety of envelopes and at the end, I'm actually gonna show you behind the scenes, which you don't normally get to see. You're gonna see where Greg stands. And I have a unit there which stores all of my envelopes, all of my uh, labeling stuff, all of my magnetic sheets. And I'm gonna show you how I store all of these. Um, but this, as I say, this system of labeling and the actual envelopes themselves has worked for me when I had a really small unit to when I now have a much larger collection. So I'm gonna just run through those and the different options available to you and how different companies kind of do it. So I do have a little bit of a mixture, but all of these work for me. As I say, I used to have this metal red unit from Hobby Lobby. Um, then I moved to a Rascog, which I still actually have the Rascog and that now stores when I get new stamps and I've labeled them, or I should say Maddie labels them because that's how she earns her allowance. Um, we're very much a family business. So she labels everything and then she puts them in the Rascog and they're the stamps that I'll go to first if I'm gonna do a video. I'll go and pick out that Rascog and then you've seen that in some previous videos before. Um, that goes into the Rascog and then when I've used a stamp, it goes into this draw system that you're gonna see afterwards. So that's kind of the stage. It comes in, you'll see the cart later, then Maddie labels it, it goes into the Rascog and then when it's used, it goes into kind of my, my big system, okay. Um, so, the small size I use, these are the Avery L small plastic envelopes. So these are the small size. And I've linked everything as always in the video description. If you want to know how to get to the video description, look at the bottom right hand corner. If you're on a desktop, usually you have to go underneath the video and hit the show more button. And then if you're on an iPad or a phone, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see there's like a little arrow that goes like this. If you hit that, that will expand the description and you'll see all the links down there. I also sometimes use an off-brand because you can buy these in bulk from an off-brand. And again, I've linked those up in the video description, you can buy them in the 50s and 100s. They're on Amazon Prime um, and I find they're just as good a quality. And I, because I go through so many of them, I do have to say I buy this other brand from Amazon sometimes, um, particularly if there's a new release coming out, those kinds of things, you'll find that I do that too. Um, so this is the small size. I label everything in that top left hand corner, or I should say Maddie does. Um, so this one says La La Land Crafts, Mermaid Princess Marcy. Um, this is labeled with the P-Touch. I, I have a normal P-Touch and I have a P-Touch embellish. And so um, I've linked both of them in the video description. The reason I like the P-Touch embellish is because you can print on washi tape. So it's really fun for using on your cards, for using on gifts. You can also print on a special ribbon that you can get to go in them. 
Um, again, you can get our Amazon Prime links in the video description for you. Um, I also, again, I use an off-brand of refills just because I go through so many and I find the Brother refills are quite expensive. So again, I've linked up those for you and I've been using this off-brand forever. They work really well. They're really inexpensive. They, in my opinion, are the best option. So this is the small Avriel size and then they do a medium size, which are like this. Again, same option. If I have dyes, they tend to get put in the back. I'm gonna talk in a minute about magnetic sheets. I'll come back to those for your dyes. Um, but this is the medium size and there is a the large size. So they're kind of your three options. They're actually called small, large, and extra large. There's no medium, but go figure. Okay, so they're the Avery L options. And this is probably what you'll see most crafters use. And I'm gonna show you a couple of other options too that just fit certain sizes of stamps that I go to. Um, but if you were to invest in a set, this is a really good set to go to and it's pretty much going to fit every kind of stamp out there. Um, do we have any questions yet, Greg? Because I just kind of waffled through all of those. Um, just bits and pieces here and there. I think, I'm not sure, but I think Jane Robinson just sent us one ninety nine. Oh, thank you, Jane. Which I don't think anybody's ever done before. Oh, no, I don't think they have. Thank you, Jane. Thank you That's so much. Cool. We love you. <laughs> I don't even know how you do that. I don't know either. I didn't know that was even possible. No, neither did I, but thank you. I didn't know you could do that either. Um, so, okay, cool. So there's that. Okay, so I'm going to just keep rambling on about different envelopes unless you have any questions. If you have questions, let um, just drop them in the chat. Greg's monitoring the chat and he can let me know if you have any questions. A couple of people have lost connection. But I still have connection. Uh, it looks like we still have connection. Still I can still have it going. Uh, we do record it, so in case we ever lose connection, we can upload another version afterwards. Okay, so what do you do about stamps that maybe don't fit in these, or if you need a different option? There are some other options out there. So if you buy stamps from Ellen Hudson, they already come in envelopes. They also come pre-labeled, so you don't have to do anything. How nice is that? And if you buy dyes from Ellen Hudson, they come on a magnet sheet. So I love Ellen. Thank you, Ellen, we love you. Um, she also gives our members 10% off all month and she gives everybody else 10% off until the 18th of every month. Um, so you can always check those links out in the video description. But yes, it all comes pre-done and they're a lot thicker too. They're much, much thicker. They are a bit more expensive, um, which is why I couldn't afford to put all of my stamps in these. But if you buy stamps that are essentials by Ellen, they will come like this, the dies will come on magnetic sheets and I've linked up the magnetic sheets on their own um, and I'll come back to magnetic sheets at the end. Um, but if you buy dies, they already come pre-done like this. Six by six background stamps and six by six stencils. Now I'm gonna come back to stencils in general in a second because I have my whole stencil box to the side, but I like the Brutus Monroe cargo sleeves. They're really nice and thick. They're like they're not the same thickness as Ellen's. Um, but these are called the Brutus Monroe Cargo Sleeves. Again, links in the video description for you. Um, but I absolutely adore these. In my opinion, these are the best. You can't get any better than these. Um, they are really nice thickness. They're great for your stencils. Nothing's going to cut them, scrape them, any of those things. You can fit your background stamps in these too. Um, I really, really like these. And I love Christopher, he's great. Um, I have tons and tons of these. I've been slowly, what, I really struggled. I used to be able to get envelopes like the Avery L's in a six by six dies, and then Amazon discontinued them. And so I've been searching for something that I'd put my six by six in. And then I went to Christopher's Christmas party and I found that he did these. And so I've been slowly kind of transitioning everything over to these. It's kind of a slow process and I couldn't afford to do it all at once. So I've been doing a few packs here and there every single month. Um, but yeah, I'm absolutely loving these. So that's my recommendation on those. That's a Home Depot recommendation. Um, the yes, that's coming. That's what I'm going to say in a minute. Oh, really? Yes. When I come back to magnetic sheets, I have a few recommendations for cheap ways to do magnetic sheets. Amanda, you're jumping ahead there. Like <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. I'm trying to get through envelopes. I'm trying to make it easy if people want to find something. I'll get there, I promise. Okay, my favorite thing. So my favorite things do a lot of these tall stamps. And if you have these, like the large Avery Owls, they don't fit in these, the large Avery Owls. They only fit in the extra large. But I don't like the fact that you have all this kind of wasted pocket. So I do buy the My Favorite Things tool pockets. Again, I've linked them in the video description for you. Unfortunately, right now they're out of stock, but you can do a notify me and they get them in fairly regularly. 
Um, so I do buy these from the My Favourite Things. If you want to keep the backers in them, I suggest just trim off about half an inch off the bottom, the white piece, and then it will actually fit in here. I keep the backers because of doing photos and things like that. But again, label them like this, and then if you do cut that half inch off, there is a little tab that goes on in the back. Um, and I realise, again, they're a little bit of a thicker material. And because I don't have a huge amount of My Favourite Things, okay, I probably have more than average because you've seen my hauls recently from them um yes greg's staring at me right now um yeah. <laughs> then but i just like the fact that this is a nice size and it fits their stamps perfectly because they have that tall but narrower kind of size envelope now the only other one that i buy that's slightly different is the large size from Altenew, and let me tell you why well, first of all i really like this zip that they have on the top here but the reason I buy them is the um, large stamp size would fit in the extra large size from Avery L. So you could fit it in there. But what you can't fit in there is the backer. And the reason I like to keep the new Altidue backers is if you open them up, they um, have some little cards that you can mount up, but they also have instructions and ideas and inspiration sheets of how to use the stamps themselves. So this is their new style of backer. If you haven't bought an old new stamp recently, um, you wouldn't have seen these, but I really like their new backer style and I want to keep these because they have color combination ideas, they have all sorts of things in there and they slide in there really nicely with the stamps themselves just like this and then you can zip it up. So these are the large Altenews. They come in a 10 or a 25 pack. Again, I've linked to the video description. You can get them at Ellen Hudson or direct from Altenew, and I've linked those up for you. And welcome DShop125 to the Member Perks program. We can't wait to have you. Uh, do check out, there's the community links, or you can join the Facebook group. Uh, links in the video description, or you can go to the channel homepage and hit community, and all your links are there for everything too. Uh, Donna, welcome Donna. Um, so uh, everything's there too. So they are the envelopes used. The only other one I buy are these uh, job ticket holders. This is for large, of course you can fit paper in here. These are the dilution stencils. So anything that's super large I put in job ticket holders. Again, I don't buy the Avery L ones, uh, not Avery L, just Avery I think they are, um, that you can get online at Amazon. They're really expensive. So I found, after lots of ordering and finding ones that I didn't like, I found these ones, links in the description below. These are really inexpensive for the amount you get. I think you get 50 or 100 in a pack and they're pretty much the same price as 10 of the Avery ones. So again, check out the video description. These are really good. You can see they're nice and thick. You can get a top open or you can get a side open depending what you prefer. Um, I just bought a whole nother pack. They arrived this morning. Um, Maddie told me she was out. So they are all of the different envelopes that I use. And that's how I do them. Everything has a label in the top left hand corner. Um, and then if I look at my stencils, so as I was mentioning earlier, I like to store my six by six stencils now go in those Brutus Monroe cargo sleeves. Um, previously I had tried, when I was trying to find cargo sleeves, many moons ago, I'm gonna try and find, you could get on, here we go, on Amazon, they did, they're basically the same thickness of the Avery L, but they did a six by six version. These were awesome, but they discontinued them. So then I found poly bags, but they're really thin. Um, I didn't really like them, but it was the best I could do. Then I had the bright idea of taking the extra large version of the Avery L's, but then I had all this wasted space. So I started doing it that I took the Avery L's and then I trimmed it down. You can see here, this was the best solution I came up with. Trimmed it down so that it kind of was at the top of the stencil. I just took my Tim Holtz trimmer and then just trimmed the bag off like this. And this worked really, really well. And in fact, that's the stencil I need to make my next video with after we've done this live. So I'm just gonna leave that one to the side. Um, and welcome Brandy Moore. So lots and lots of new members today. Welcome everybody. So we're having a really good day. Um, don't forget to say, check out the community post, register for your birthday card, all of those fun things. Um, so these are the stencils. So that's how I store my stencils. This is one of the Ikea kind of white boxes that lots of people use. It's called a... Um, 
doesn't even say what it's called anymore. There's just a number on the bottom. But you can get these in large and small. I have tons of these. I use them all over the place. Um, but yeah, this was what I was using, the extra large ones. And then I started to trim them down, which was a better way of doing them. Um, didn't like the poly bags. Used to like the um, old like Avriel style and six by six, but they didn't do those anymore. And then I keep them all in here so I can just scroll through. And my super large ones go in those job ticket holders. Okay. So you've got all your stamps, you've got, oh, dies. Dies are magnetic sheets. So as I say, you can get magnetic sheets from Ellen Hudson. You can also get the magnetic sheets from Stampin' Storage. They're really expensive. If you can afford to do that, awesome. And they do a really nice container for them. I know a lot of Stampin' Up! demos do those. I can't afford to do that. I just, I can't afford to do that. I have way too many to do that. So. My best tip is a couple of different things. And again, links are all in the video description for these things. So, magnetic vent covers, who I think somebody mentioned earlier. About half a dozen people have. We were having there a whole go. conversation okay. about it. Yeah, so <laughs> magnetic vent covers are an awesome way to go. However, they can still turn up pretty pricey when you have a lot of dyes. So another option, which I have linked for you in the description below, is you can buy a whole roll of the same material that they use for vent covers. And I think, if I just scroll down, I can't remember the size of the roll. You can buy a whole roll of it, which is, um, there it is. So this roll is 24 inches by 10 feet. So you can get a whole, so it's two foot wide by 10 feet long, and it's 40 bucks on Amazon with free shipping. So it's a pretty good deal. Um, so you can get a whole um, roll of them. So that's what I tend to do because even buying the vent holders actually mounts up really quickly. So if you buy the whole roll, and I say I've linked it in the description below, um, it's exactly the same thing and you can just buy a whole roll of it and then you just cut off as much as you need to. Cut it with a rotary cutter, cut it with your Tim Holtz scissors, cut it with a trimmer, however you like to do. Um, any one of those works really, really well. Um, I've also linked out the Deflecto vent covers. They're in the description. You can also get them on Prime. And then Deflecto, which I'll show you in a second, they rebranded them as magnetic craft sheets or something like that because they knew crafters love them. But they're the same thing. I've given you all the options in the description. Also, Silhouette do um, magnetic sheets. Sometimes you can find those for cheap. Um, I kind of click on all the options. But really, I just buy the big roll. I keep that next to my station, which you'll see in a second. And then there are all of the options there. So somebody said, uh, Joseph says he has this Tonic Studio storage case for magnetic sheets. That is a really nice option. But again, when you see how many stumps and dies I have, you would know, you'll see how many um, of those cases I would need to have to um, store all of my stumps and dies. The other thing I do is if I have a stamp set such as Let's Toast, what I like to do, and this one, I don't know why this one doesn't have a magnetic sheet, but what I like to do is I then take a piece of the magnetic sheet from the roll, I put it normally in the back, and then I keep my dies and my stamps together. So that if I'm using a set, and I don't buy many coordinating dies, as you all know, I like to use my scan and cut, um, but I bought this one because it goes with an interactive set, so I wanted to make sure I had the slots in the right place. Um, but what I would do is just put the dies in the back, then I know if I do have the coordinating dies, I haven't got to look through my stamps and die sets, to uh, see if I have those to go together. Which leads me into how do I store my stamps and dies? So lots of you have said to me, you know, how do I store these? Do I store them by category? Do I store them by company? Do I store them by um, type? How do I store my stamps and dies? Okay, stencils. So you see my stencils are over here. They don't really have an organization system. I've tried all sorts of things like, do I store it by background? Do I store it by category? Do I store it by company? I used to be on the Crafters Workshop um, design team, and back then I used to just keep all my Crafters Workshop ones together and then everything else together. I mean, these are all of my stencils, and I can fit them all in one box. So for me to have to just, I pretty much know what stencils I have, so I pretty much just scroll through looking for what I want. Um, I have a section that has all of my background builders, like my clouds, my um, MFT grass, my background hillsides, all those kinds of things. So I keep those together. I guess my large ones tend to stick together because they go at the back, so they don't obscure other things. And my crafters workshop ones, 
six by sixes, they tend to stay together as kind of a natural order of how things have evolved. But other than that, there kind of isn't an organization system. And, and that works for me. You might want to store them alphabetically. You might want to store them by company. You might want to store all your Christmas ones together. So it really depends whether you're on a design team or not with your stencils. If you're on a design team for a company, I really suggest keeping that company stuff out. And for instance, I work with Tonic. So all of my Tonic stuff is in a separate drawer because I have tons and tons of Tonic stuff. You know, I have my Nouveau wall over there and I do have a whole drawer that has all my Tonic stencils, dies, stamps, shaker pockets, all that kind of stuff. All of that sits in a drawer on its own because if I'm doing a project for Tonic, I want to be able to just go to that drawer and know that that's all of my Tonic supplies. That works for Yeah, we're back. We're back. Okay. That was Greg. He was so busy chatting, he forgot he had a half an hour limit on the camera. So, um, so that's the first thing I'm going to say to you to think about is, um, do you have a design team? If you have a design team commitment, then um, make sure you, I would recommend that you pull that design team out. Whatever system you use for the rest of your things, um, I would think about your design team commitment separately. So that's, that's tip number one. Think about whether you're on a design team or not. Number two is um, after you've thought about design teams, how do you work? Now, some people like to categorize in things like Evernote, or um, I'm trying to think some of the other systems that people use out there, but there's all sorts of different cataloging systems and notepad systems. And I'm sure you're gonna be chatting between yourselves about um, different, um, different apps you can use to catalog. Some people just use iCloud photos and have different, um, what they call, different albums and things. Um, you can kind of do it however you want. Whatever works for you. I don't have a system like that. I have way too many stamps. I have way too many coming in, way too many going out. Could you imagine me going through that with the mystery boxes and taking out every single stamp that I de-stashed and having to inventory that? I mean, it would just be a nightmare. So I don't do that. That's me. That's my personal way. Um, yeah, Airtable is one. Um, I know someone who used to use Airtable. They loved it. They swore by it. Um, some people love it. So if you want to catalog, go for it. I can't do that. When you see my collection, you will understand why. Maybe if I'd started in the beginning, it would be doable. If I started now, it would be about three months work. And then in the meantime, I've got more and more stamps coming in. I'd have to catalog those and it would just be a never ending process. Okay, so do you store by category? Do you store by brand? Do you store by something else? Do you store your stamps and dies separately? So when I first started, I stored by brand. And that worked really nicely because I could be like, okay, today I'm gonna do a waffle flower post. So I'm gonna go and grab my waffle flower section and it was a very small section. Or today I'm gonna to do a, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do an MFT post. Or today I'm going to do a, I'm trying to think of brands, alter new post. Um, and so I could go and grab those sections. And that was fine because I was mainly working on design teams and if I wanted to do something, I would want to link to one particular store. Then I decided that I didn't want to work on design teams anymore for various reasons. That was my choice and I decided that isn't how I was gonna work anymore. And then I would think, okay, so now I'm gonna do something for Ellen Hudson. Today I want to link to Ellen's store. Okay, well, Ellen sells Altenew and she sells MFT and she sells Pretty Pink Posh and she sells Lawn Fawn. Okay, this is getting tough. So now I have to go and grab all of those sections. And of course, my whole table was a disaster zone. Greg's going, well, what's new? <laughs> Same old, nothing changed. <laughs> anyway, so that didn't work for me. So I was like, okay, scrap that idea. Particularly when it came to say I wanted to do a Christmas card, I would have to go through my lawn fawn section and pull out all my Christmas stuff, and my waffle flower section and pull out all my Christmas stuff, and my old new section and pull out all my Christmas stuff. And then I was finding at Christmas, I'd just have a Christmas box, and so I'd scroll through all of that. Okay, that was becoming way too hard. So then we spent an entire weekend and we went through all of my stash and we reorganized it. So I'd have an interactive cards section 
and I had a Christmas card section and I had a sentiment section and I had a floral section and a people section and a this section and that section. Okay, fab. That worked for a while. And then I was like, yeah, but this is a bit woolly because in my floral section, my floral stamps have sentiments in. Oh, but then I have dyes and then my dyes are getting mixed up. But then I kind of want my dyes separate to my stamps. Hmm. Isn't this exactly what I told you would happen when you tried to do it by category? Yeah. Because it's all ambiguous, you can't. So we tried to do it by category. I have always stored my stamps and my dies together. I've never separated them out. So that for dies, when I did it by category, they'd be like a basics dies section, which have my squares, my circles, my ovals, my, um, I don't know, my whatever's in. And then my word dies would go in my sentiment section and my flower dies would go in my floral section. So that worked for a while until it didn't but it might work for you. So if you tend to craft and you're crafting purely for fun and you want to just craft and you mainly make cards for Mother's Day and you make your Christmas cards and you make your, um, I don't know, your Easter cards, those kind of things, then I think doing it by category would probably be the easiest way. So if you're not doing this as a business, you're not doing it as a blog, you're not doing it as anything like I am, then I think storing it by category is actually the best way to do it. Um, and I would separate it out by season. So I would have your Christmas section, probably spring, um, floral, sentiments, like just pure sentiment sets. Don't try and do birthday and all of that kind of stuff. Just things that are sentiment stamp sets. Um, because trust me, that gets way too ambiguous. I try to separate out and that doesn't work. Um, word dies have a section for that, so those kinds of things. Um, so then when we moved into this room, I was like, okay, do over. I went back to company. So now I am back to an Alta New section, an Ellen Hudson section, a La La Land section. Excuse me. A, I'm trying to think, my favorite thing section. Now within those, I did not split out by category. I thought I would. My plan when I put them in by um, by brand was to then go back through and sort by brand within that. And I thought, oh, within my lawn fall, I'm gonna have an interactive section and I'm gonna have a basic section and I'm gonna have a word die section. Ultimately, A, I've never had time. B, I've never found a need because if I'm gonna make a card, A, a I pretty much know what I have. I'm, um, do I, am I not pretty good? Good, Greg, at knowing what I have? Yeah, pretty good. I'm pretty Where good it at... is, on the other hand. Oh, very funny. <laughs> so I'm pretty good at knowing what I have, despite having a large collection. I find that if I'm going to make a Mother's Day card, I tend to home in on a collection. Um, so if I was going to do, I don't know, what's this one? Inked Flora. I'm going to stick with Old New on the whole. I might say, okay, I need a word die. And then I'm going to be like, okay, well, I'm going to try to stick to Alta New because for social media purposes, for what I do, um, I'm going to aim that Alta New want to repost that post. So I'm going to try to stick to Alta New things. I might think, okay, who stocks Alta New? Okay, scrapbook.com stock Alta New and Ellen Hudson stock Alta New. So I'm going to use products that they stock. So if I really don't have something from Alta New, I'm going to think who stocks Alta New and then I'm going to use products that they stock. So that's kind of my thinking. But from a hobbyist point of view, I would do it by category. So that's kind of a long rambled way of getting to that. But that's kind of the thought process. That's kind of how I got there. I think um, lots of you have been kind of chatting about um, how, how you store yours and different organization sections and all those kinds of things. Simon also stores his by um, company as well. And yeah, I agree with um, Simon Hurley's here. He says he knows what style each company has. And I think generally, like, you know, if I was going to do an Ulta New card, I don't know about you, Simon, but I would want to stick to Ulta New style. You know, typically, I'm not going to then go and grab a Lawn Fawn sentiment because that's a very different style to an Ulta New style. And it's probably not going to fit very well on my card overall. But that's kind of my thought process. Um, when I'm doing that. So it's kind of a bit rambly, but that's really how I do it. If I'm a hobbyist, I'm gonna store it by category because I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, if I'm a doing it as a blogger or if I want to start a blog, 
I would definitely store it by company because I think you're gonna find it easier. And particularly if you're on a design team, definitely break that design team. All of the products for that design team, break that out into another category. Because I, um, I think that's gonna be way, way easier. Um, so that's kind of my thought process. That's kind of how I work. Uh, that's kind of how I think about it. So hopefully that's given you some ideas that tells you how I store my stamps, what I store them in, the labeling process, the organization process, some ideas. Now you're going to get to see behind the scenes. You're going to get to see what's behind the camera. So you're going to get to see what, nothing that you normally get to see. Um, but you're going to get to see where I store my stamps once they've been used. So as I say, they come in, they get to go on a cart, which you're going to see. Then Maddie labels them. They get to go in a RASCOG, which is where I go, first of all, to find anything that I want to use for a video. That's actually not in this room. And then um, from there, once I've used them in a video, they then go into a set of drawers, which you're also going to get to see. So um, I'm going to get up and you're going to get to see where they go. Let's move around. So Greg, you also have to move. Well, I'm sat down. So I'm now the other oh, side of the camera. I'm coming, I'm coming in so when stamps come in, they go in these boxes here. So I've just had a purchase from Alton New, so that's all in here ready for Maddie to label. And then this is the cart that I use. So I bought this because I saw it on Jennifer McGuire's blog. And I thought it was a really good idea because it had lots of little drawers and it had some bigger drawers. I actually really don't like it because it's a bit wobbly. Um, now, I don't know if that's because Greg didn't do the screws up tight enough or... Well, you ever know me not to build something properly? It might take me six months to build it, but when I build it, it's built. Or if it's just the cart itself. But actually, this one stays where it is, so it doesn't matter to me. Um, but if you want something that you roll around, then I go. I say go with the Rask Hog or the Target Cart Essentials type thing. But this does work really, really well for labelling. Um, so in here, I have my two P-Touch machines. So, and it, of course, everything's labeled on the front. Underneath, I have all of my refills, um, including things like the label versions and some other little printers and things. Underneath, I have swatching, and I'm gonna cover swatching in another video. Um, in here, oh, these are really cool. We didn't talk about these. These are magazine holders. So if you saw my Copic swatching thing on that, these allow you to put magazines inside of ring binders. So if you have a magazine you like or a book you like, if you do the Copic classes, you can then put your magazine inside of here and you can put this inside of a ring binder. I did put these, the links to these in the description because I think they're really, really cool. Um, in here I have poly bags and just kind of random sizes just in case I need something a little bit extra. And down here I have the deflecto magnet sheets, there's some vent covers in here, that kind of stuff. And then up here, we start with, these are my Avery L small. So you've got the small, large, extra large. My job ticket holders, as I say, we just bought a new box of those. And then this one has the cargo sleeves, the large uh, Alton News, and my, my favorite things ones. And then the next one down right in the bottom, has 12 by 12 pockets and what else do I keep in there? Oh, some of the card front sized um, pockets that kind of go into quarters. So if I do like a trial coloring of Copics, I keep those in a ring binder and again, they all fit into there. So that's that one. Now this unit over here, which will be part of a craft room tour because Greg has promised you a craft room tour. This is my kind of main storage unit behind the scenes. Um, and I'm trying to read your comments as well because I have another computer I can read it on. But this kind of stores my adhesives. This is just an Ikea unit. It's actually a kitchen unit. This is one of my um, embossing powder drawers. But then underneath, I have two of these units. So these store all of my stamps and dies. And as I say, they're done alphabetically. So here I have all of my alternates, and you can see that they're in those the new style in those new um, packets. And then we've got um, Art Impressions and Avery L and Carabella Studios, Clearly Besotted, Concord and Ninth, Darcy's, Ellen Hudson, Elizabeth Craft Designs, you know, all those kinds of things. So you see, and all four of these drawers are absolutely full. Greg has promised me some proper dividers, not just Amazon boxes that are cut up, but you know, as he says, you don't have to remind him every six months. He is going to get round to it. 
Are you Greg? Yeah. Maybe. Some point. <laughs> the other thing in the front of this drawer is I have a box which has all my Darcy's tin pins in because all my Darcy's are in this drawer. So if I need the tin pins that go with it, these are right in the front. So that works really nicely. And then in the drawer below, we have more. So I've got Gerda Steiner, Kindred Stamps, Hedgehog Hollow, Hello Bluebird. And then you can see a rather excessive lawn fawn collection, um, Mama Elephant and the Starp, the My Favourite Things collection. So that's kind of how it works alphabetically. And then it goes into the other unit that's next to it. Um, so there's that one. I better not trap these cables because I'll get in trouble. So that's that. And then, yeah, so you have another unit over here. This one has all of my WOW embossing powders in, which is one of my favorite drawers. It's a very, very pretty drawer. And the one underneath is my foiling drawer. So I have all of my foils in this one. And then more stamps in the one below. And then my bottom drawer is all of my tonic things. So that's how that works. So you can see that's how all of my kind of stamps and everything works. Um, so I'm just going to revisit some of the questions and comments we didn't see because we were around there. Um, so someone else. The design team. Seems to be questions come up. Okay, we'll answer that. And someone says I have a whole cart just for organizing my organizing supplies. Yes, I do see the irony. <laughs> It's a very well organised organising cart though. It is a very well organised organising cart. <laughs> uh, so there's that. So yes, Justine Hovey did just do a thing about design teams. A few people have done videos about getting on design teams. Um, someone asked what other celebs are hanging out here. I don't know. Maybe they're just lurking in the background. Um, someone says, do I have recommendations on changing wood stamps to cling stamps? Now, I've never done that. I do have a small-ish collection still of wood stamps. They're not in this room. They're in the basement. Um, small-ish? It's two boxes, Greg. Two enormous boxes? It's two boxes. You've got buckets of them. No, it's two boxes, and I used to have a lot, lot more, and he made me downsized to two boxes. We compromised on two. I mystery boxed everything else. We've mystery boxed a hundred boxes so far, and there's one more lot still to do next weekend. Um, so my my recommendation on going from wood to thing. I've heard that the best method is the microwave method. Whether that's true or not, I couldn't tell you. Um, but yeah, from what I've heard, the microwave method is the best method. I would do a YouTube. Um, on that there. Do I do I love WOW embossing powder? Yes, I do. We are actually going to have a subscription box in a couple of months with WOW embossing powder with custom colours in it. I'm so excited about that. Is that a bit breaking news though? Are we not supposed to have announced that? I yet? can say that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited. I love WOW embossing powders. Have I done scan and cut videos? Yes, tons. There's a whole playlist about the scan and cut. Um, so there's that. How do I organize my desktop? There is a video on my desktop essentials and how I organize those. Uh, so there's that. Someone said about the bathtub. There was a joke last week about me throwing punches in the bathtub. Um, so I think that covers most of, where do I get the binders for top loading envelopes? I don't know what binders, binders for top loading envelopes. I don't know. I don't know. Do you mean the binders for the magazine holders? If you can let us know, we'll answer that one. Um, we will let you know the unboxing. The unboxing of next month's subscription box will be on the 15th of May. So watch out on the channel for the 15th of May. Um, so there's that as well. So, um, 
So there's that. So design teams. So I will do a video. In fact, I will get Greg to write it down now that it needs to go on our video list of how to get on a design team. Now I know some designers have done videos. We all kind of have our own thoughts and opinions as to how you get on that. Um, you know, how do you get onto a design team? How do you get started blogging? All those kinds of things. I guess my, my way has been different to other people's way. Um, Justine Hovey did a series. You can go and check her series out. You know, how do you get started as an influencer and designer? Um, her way was different to my way. So I guess if we all cover it, you can see different ways to get started. Um, blogging and getting on a design team, those kinds of things. We do always advertise our design team calls. You know, they are always advertised on thehedgehoghollow.com. And we put them on our Friday newsletter as well. So if you're not signed up, you can go to thehedgehoghollow.com. You can sign up for our newsletter. And if you watch it every Friday, we have a design team call every six months or so. So you can, you can apply that way. So there's that too. So that's, uh, I think covers most people's questions. As I say, uh, links in the video description for everything that I've had in today's video. Um, lots and lots of fun ideas for you. Um, I hope that you will find uh, something useful in there, no matter what size your collection is. As I say, I've been using this method of envelopes ever since I had a really small stamp collection. You can now see I have a much larger stamp and die collection, and this has still worked for me. Vent covers are great, but if you want a more cost-effective solution, I do recommend getting the big roll of magnet, and um, you can get those rolls in different sizes too. Um, I did work it out per square inch, I think it was, and it worked out cheaper to get the big roll. And also with this, I can have a big piece, a small piece, whatever size, and I had less wastage going into my envelopes. Um, so there's that as well. So have I answered every question, Greg? I think so. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for spending some of your Sunday with us. Um, if you have any other questions, you can, of course, always drop them in the comments below. If you have requests for videos after we're live, you can drop those in the comments below too. Thank you for joining us for part of your weekend. I hope you've learned something. I hope it was interesting and everything else. Don't forget to check out our perks program too. Um, really lots and lots of savings, 10% off at Ellen Hudson, 15% off at Ranger, free shipping at Sunny Studios, free shipping at Pink and May, shipping credits for internationals. 10% um, off at Hedgehog Hollow, 20% um, off at Thermoweb, which is awesome, that's amazing, 10% off at Tonic, um, tons more as well, Hedgehog Hollow birthday card, early access to our content, $5 off mystery boxes, and you get to shop mystery boxes early. We'll have more for you next weekend, and if you are a Hedgehog Hollow member, you get to shop those early. Um, which is great. So you get, I think we had 50 last week and then only 20 of them made it to the live. So 30 of those got snapped up early by our Perks members. Um, whew, I'm out of breath. So lots and lots of things there that we got to share with you. Hope you found it useful. I will see you again tomorrow in another video and then we'll see you live again Wednesday 8 p.m. Eastern with the Tonic Studio USA Live. Lots of fun things coming your way. We will hopefully be unboxing the next Tonic Studios kit. I'm waiting for it to arrive. I believe it's in customs right now. So assuming, assuming it passes customs, we'll have that for you on Wednesday. If not, we'll have something else fun. Check out last week's. If you didn't see it, it was 10 seconds shaker cards. They're the easiest shaker cards you've ever seen. No foam, no adhesive deactivation, like super, super easy. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. We are around about 100 people off of the 36,000 subscriber mark. Can't believe I'm saying that. So please share this video with your friends. Share Hedgehog Hollow with them. We'd love to hit that 36,000 subscriber mark. I'm super, super excited. Um, and we'll have a fun giveaway over on Instagram on Friday too. So if you're on Instagram, check out at the Hedgehog Hollow. We'll be giving away some color cases, which is a fun storage unit from scrapbook.com. I'll see you then. Happy stamping, everyone. Bye.